Hi, I'm Kevin. Welcome to my cave. Last time we did an initial design for a test rig to show how the current in a transistor or diode varies with the voltage across it. This time I want to breadboard and test the circuit. I encourage you to download a copy of the schematic from the project GitHub so that you can follow along in detail. There's a link down there in the doobly-doo somewhere. Let's do a quick review and jump into it. What we're trying to do is generate a voltage ramp and apply it to a device under test. We designed an op-amp circuit that will sense the current while holding the other end of the device at a virtual ground. We have a Schmidt trigger circuit looking at the current that resets the ramp generator when the current rises to a predetermined set point. And we buffer both the voltage and the sensed current and send them to an oscilloscope for analysis. I have it built up on the breadboard here. The first thing I want to do is check that all the power and ground pins are at the correct voltages. If I were using expensive ICs, I'd do that before plugging them in, but these are cheap and I've limited my power supply to 50 milliamps, which a lot of simple devices will survive even when wired backwards. Next, I want to adjust the current sense amplifier. I'll use the 100k feedback resistor, and I'll apply a zero current by tying the input to ground through a 1k resistor. I'll try to zero the output voltage by adjusting the trimmer. It's a really finicky adjustment even with a multi-turn pot. If I were redesigning this, I'd use a smaller pot with padding resistors on the two ends. But I should have to adjust this only once. Now I'll move on to testing the current sense in the Schmidt trigger. I'll unground the 1K resistor and connect it to my function generator instead. I'll select the 10K feedback resistor. So I expect the current sense to put out 10 volts per milliamp. I'll set the function generator to put out a triangle wave ranging from 0 to plus 1 volt. That will give me a current between 0 and 1 milliamp. And I'll put scope probes on the current sense output and the output of the Schmidt trigger, which will become the reset line. Let's do it! I'm seeing about what I expect to see. As the current increases, the voltage output from the current sense ramps downward. At about negative 8 volts, the Schmidt trigger abruptly switches from negative 12 volts to ground. On the way back up, it's switching back again when the current sense output drops to about half a volt. Let's put the scope cursors on and measure a little more accurately. It's looking good. It's triggering at 8.1 volts and 0.6 volts. I'm happy with those numbers. The only major sub-circuit left to test is the ramp generator. Since we have a reset line working, we should be able simply to install a device under test and see what happens. So I'll disconnect the function generator, hook scope probes up to the buffered voltage and current outputs, and stick in a 1N4148 diode as the device under test. When I power it on, it seems to be just working. I'm seeing the forward voltage rise from zero to about six tenths of a volt, and the current going from nothing to about eight tenths of a milliamp in the characteristic hockey stick shape of a silicon diode. Let me try the other current scales. 8 milliamps, 800 microamps, 80 microamps, 8 microamps, all look good.
But when I go to the 800 nanoamp scale, I get some problems. The circuit is far too slow to reset. The drive voltage is falling to zero almost immediately. But the current readout is falling far too slowly. I think that what's going on is that there's enough stray capacitance that a 10 mega ohm resistor is taking a big fraction of the cycle to discharge it. Even 10 picofarads would give a 100 microsecond time constant. That's one of the perils of a janky breadboard setup. In addition, I'm starting to see significant interference and noise at the low end of the current range. And there are a couple more issues that I want to fix. So there's a few changes I'm going to want to make here. The first thing is that I really was failing to follow good practice. I want to have a resistor in series with the reset line going to the JFET. And the reason for that is that if it ever goes positive with respect to the source or the drain, then what's going to happen is that that JFET will go into very, very heavy conduction, and it'll probably destroy the transistor. That hasn't happened yet, and the way the circuit is designed, it shouldn't, but it's a really good practice to include the protection, so I'll put 100K in here. There's just enough space to squeeze in that 100K resistor right here. Let's quickly power it up and see if adding that resistor affected anything. Nope. Looks just the same as before. That's good. I wasn't expecting it to change anything. The next thing I want to do is I want to make the cycle of the circuit longer. If the reset is slow, then one way to deal with the slow reset is simply to make it a smaller fraction of the cycle. So I'm going to just put in a timing cap ten times as bigger. That means that instead of taking a millisecond to complete a cycle, it'll take 10 milliseconds. No big deal. Out with the old, and in with the new. Let's power that up and see how it affects things. Well, it certainly stretched out the cycle time. Let me switch the time base on the scope. That actually looks pretty good. The reset time is now a small fraction of a cycle. The noise and interference are still a problem. We're going to have to look further into that. Another thing is that I think I can make the reset faster if it's not driving as big a voltage into the stray capacitance. I think that a 0 to 1 volt swing rather than a 0 to 8 volt swing might be a more reasonable range for the Schmidt trigger. So let me change those values. I ran it through the Python script, and it tells me this one should be 2.7k. This one should be 620k. And now I'm going to have to increase the gain of the output inverter by a factor of 10, because my voltage range is 10 times smaller. So I'll replace this resistor with a 10k. And I think those are the changes I want to make for the moment. Let's see how they go. Future Kevin here. Somewhere in editing this video, I lost the fact that some of the devices need a drive voltage more than a volt. That'll saturate the output buffer, so I'll cut its gain back from 10 to 5, by cutting its feedback resistor from 91k to 39k. One more change that I almost forgot. Since I cut the Schmidt trigger range back to 1 volt, I need a 100 ohm feedback resistor in the current sense circuit to select a 10 milliamp current range. I'll put it here next to the others. Time to power it on again. It looks good on the 10 milliamp range with the new 100 ohm resistor. Same with 1 milliamp, 100 microamps, 10 microamps. But on the 1 microamp setting, the signal is full of garbage. And on the 100 nanoamp range, the circuit is oscillating. Where's the oscillation coming from? 
Because the upper trace is clean, we can tentatively say that the Schmidt trigger and ramp generator are innocent. The chief suspect is the current sense circuit. The power supplied by a thing is about as good as I'm going to get on a breadboard. So we probably want to make the circuit into a low-pass filter, with a cutoff below the frequency of oscillation, by adding a tiny capacitor in the feedback loop. Choosing the value tends to be a cut-and-try process. Typically, for low-frequency circuits like this, a few tens of picofarads will tame it. I'll try 47 picofarads and see how it goes. I'll plug that little cap into the breadboard, straddling the IC. And like magic, the signal cleans up. Over on the 100 nanoamp scale, it's at least fairly stable. The reset is way too slow. And there's a beat frequency that's probably 60 hertz leaking in. But those bouncing troughs are down in the 10 to 20 nanoamp range. To measure a current that tiny repeatedly and accurately would be more work than I want to do. I have five decades, a hundred decibels, of dynamic range here. That's more than good enough for what I want to measure. It's important to know when to quit. And with that, I think that I'm going to quit for this episode. Next time I want to discuss how I'll do the data acquisition. It'll be overkill, but it's an opportunity to learn something about automated testing. And automated testing is an area where a digital scope can save you a ton of work. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll stay tuned for that. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, stay curious, and take care of one another. Bye!